Good to have you in Section Q. My name is Agent M. In this tutorial, you are going to learn how to enhance your line art by using Illustrator's Auto Trace features. Welcome back on section Q. Now this is exactly where I left you in the last part of the tutorial where we produced line art, black and white line art from a hand drawn scan. The line art, the, all the black lines are collected in one layer with a transparent background and then placed on a white layer so that I can evaluate the whole thing. Now in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use Illustrator CS6 but it will work in um, any member of the Illustrator CS family. How to use Illustrator to produce a really crisp line art from uh, this bitmap picture. In order to do so you uh, need to start up Illustrator behind the scene and uh, then you need to copy everything what is currently on your scan layer. So I make sure that I'm operating on the right layer. Then I'm just pressing Control A for select everything on that layer on my keyboard and a simple Control C to copy everything. And that would be um, the moment where we have to switch over to Illustrator. Here it comes, Illustrator CS6. I'm going to produce a fresh file in Illustrator. So file new and um, size doesn't matter, not in Illustrator anyway. I'm going to choose an A4 print template. The um, drawing is in landscape orientation. So I make sure to choose landscape as well. And then I just press OK. So. Um, well, I can simply paste it now inside my Illustrator file. Everything I selected before in Photoshop. Control V, simple paste, is transferring the line art from Photoshop to Illustrator. Now, if you pasted something from a bitmap editor like Photoshop, you will always see while the uh, pasted object still is selected, the image trace option here above. You can produce your own image trace options or you can stay with the defaults, which are actually working pretty good. So I'm going to convert this line art now in perfect vector graphic line art. Image Trace here, the drop down menu offers a lot of different um, default presets, right? Not default presets, presets. And um, after my experiences, uh, it's funny enough that line art never produces uh, results which are satisfying, but silhouettes and especially sketched art, they do. So I'm um, choosing sketched art as my default trace preset. Now it's in progress and you can see this is really producing very fine line art from um, my Photoshop drawing. So you might experiment with the other values. If uh, you uh, would like to fine tune the trace results even more, then you can have a look at the image trace panel. At the image trace panel, you will find all values affecting your tracing and you can change them one by one. Since I'm very content with the results of my Illustrator tracing process, there are only, well, I can detect one open one open uh, form here, but I'm going to correct this later on manually in Photoshop. I'm very content with this result um, and uh, I can just copy it over to Photoshop then again. So, uh, but before you do so, please, this is important, remember to expand your artwork like an expander. If you expand it in, in Illustrator, then it's really getting vector graphic art. So it's your confirmation. I want this. I need this. Right. And the anchor points are um, giving you a good 
overview over the complete vector graphic shape. Now, we are still preserving this um, as a vector graphic and copying this again now, Control C, and then I can switch back to Photoshop. Here we are, and I would simply paste it again, Control V, copy and paste, copy and paste. Now, um, depending on uh, your computer system, you need to wait a bit. And wait. Eventually, I have to ask my boss for a new computer. So now here we are, the paste dialog, paste as smart object, obviously to preserve the vector graphic quality of the object we just converted in Illustrator. So I would press OK. And then I wait again. And here we are. Um, so this is, of course, a weird uh, kind of um, hallucinative uh, result. But um, I can, first of all, confirm the play section. And uh, well, if I set my scan layer to invisible, being invisible, then I'm on the right way. So here I have my smart vector object. Going to push this in place and then I eventually can delete my scan layer. Here we are. I'm going to scale this up to 100% so that you can see how crisp this line art really was getting in the process. For the coloring process in uh, the next part of this series of tutorials, I need to fix a little flaw though. Um, actually, I lost a part of the curve above here during um, the conversion and the copy and paste processes. For um, the coloring process, later on, it's essential that all the forms are closed, so I need to correct this manually. First of all, I can convert my vector smart object into um, a bitmap object again. So I right click it and then I would choose rasterize layer and this would leave me with pixels instead of vectors. So I have a close look now at the gap here. And then actually I would take a uh, one of the pre-configured cool tools from the uh, last tutorials for instance so I'm taking the brush here and uh, then I'm looking for the presets here then I would take an HP pencil in black and I would just close the gap here we are so I think this would be fine for coloring now. Good, hope to see you in the next part of the tutorial, coloring line art in Photoshop. Have fun, so long.